How did that happen? Where did it go? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, cheers, good sir. First episode. Cheers. This aged perfectly. Yeah. I was really worried because I've had this in my fridge for I don't know how long. Because this is... It's an event when I drink this. Yeah? Because it's 9% alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah. This is the Voodoo Ranger Imperial IPA. This oh, one. yeah. You add Imperial over and it just... Then you're, yeah, you're dead. It doubles the alcohol content. Yeah. Imperial means you're dead. Like those Imperial Stouts you used to drink? Or you still drink occasionally? I still drink occasionally. Yeah. What do you it's got? Good stuff. I got a uh, Nitro Red Velvet Oatmeal Stout. A golden Oatmeal Stout with beets. Show that artwork, because that artwork uh, is just... Yeah. Chocolate and uh, natural flavors added. And a very happy King Skeleton Look Man. Look at that thing. We both have little skeleton people. It's just so happy. That's pretty neat. He's enjoying some red velvet cake red velvet and cake. and drink and lots of food. Welcome to Fanta Vision. My name is Fanta, and I'm joined with Stephen SBS. Both, indeed, always. You've got the both. SBS thing going on with your your fighting community. Yeah, video you're in games. Fight club. Yeah, I am in a fight club. Yeah, I go into sweaty underground areas with. Nothing but computer monitors and screens. People don't shower. Is and that a common thing? Because we talked about that recently in the podcast and a couple other things. And I know we're going to get into the retail stuff. I just want to quickly ask this question. Yeah, um, I, it's, I don't think it's a Smash Bros. or fighting game specific thing anymore. I saw a tweet that it's just kind of like a thing with gamers in general. So you, like, do, you do come upon that quite a bit. Yeah, I do, I do notice it. That's unfortunate. But... It's like I've seen it at Magic pre-releases, uh, one I've tagged along, and I've I've seen it elsewhere too. So yeah. it's it's not specific to no. video gamers. It's to every person that spends a lot of time and forgets to shower. I don't, I don't get it. It's stupid. But yeah. anyway, smell yourself. Yeah. Please. What the? F I think I think they get numbed to their own smells. We think the people around them, if they have friends, their friends would tell them, unless they don't shower either. That's assuming they have friends, though. Yeah. I don't know. It's that's just one of kind of awkward telling someone like, "Dude, you smell." I get, but at the same time, like if I had something in my teeth or I've got something in my face, I would rather somebody tell me and I get that little bit of awkwardness, like, "Oh, oh God, let me take care of that." Yeah, oh God, Whereas, I smell like shit. Let me go. Let me go shower. If I came home and I was hanging out with friends and I got back and looked in the mirror and I had like something on my face, I'd be like, "What assholes? Nobody told me." So I don't know. That's just me. Yeah. I I tell people as quickly as possible, like dude, your zipper's down, or like, hey, you got something in your teeth. Because like, I'm like, I'm trying to help you here. I'm looking out for you. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So today, we are discussing, what is it again? Uh, a couple topics, both very related. Uh, leaving Walmart. I, Which is uh, amazing. My backstory is I worked at that store, uh, same one as Fanta here, for four years and 11 months. I would say almost five years. But I think it's very important to note that I got out of there before, before the I hit mark. the fifth year. It was so important. So was that more or less than Eric? More. More. How many years was he there for? I don't know. Cause total. He was there off and on. Well, because, yeah, he, he was there before I was. Actually, I, I don't know if he started in electronics while I was already working at Cart Crew. But huh. he was in electronics before I moved into Photo Center. And then once he got fired and then came back... He was there for a while, too, and I think I outlived him the second time as well. So, I'm just depressing. But, yeah, so we're going to look at leaving Walmart and the potential and fear of getting stuck at Walmart. Because being there for almost five years, it's something that creeps into your brain more than once. Yeah, I mean, I, I know where you're coming from with the whole worried about getting stuck thing, because we both worked there during the time... That we had already graduated. Yeah. Like, we were done. We got our degree. And we're looking at each other like, why don't we have jobs yet that are not Walmart? <laughs> like, why are we why are we still here? And how much longer is it going to be before we have a career? Right. And that was... You and I were both really kind of terrified about that. Yeah. Especially, um, I did an internship that I knew I probably wasn't going to get a, a long-lasting position mm -hmm. from. They kind of told me out front. But when the internship ended, and I still didn't get anything for a while, 
that's when it was like yeah. I was starting to sweat a bit and uh yeah. That's scary. It was. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh But the cool thing about that internship was at least it gave you something on your resume that that was more pertaining towards your degree and what kind of job you were getting. So it helped you out in that oh, Absolutely. Respect. I got a, a some experience that got uh picked out specifically by my current employer when they checked out my resume. They're like, "Oh, you know AutoCAD." I'm like, "Well, I've dabbled in it because of my internship." Yeah. And it was a big selling point for me. So What is that? Uh, it's basically think of MS Paint but with scales. Mm. Like you can you can draw stuff and it gives you numbers. I think I've heard of yeah. that before. It's not too too difficult. Uh, and there's also other CAD programs like SolidWorks and other crazy shit that you can get into that are way more complicated. Mm -hmm. But AutoCAD just like draw stuff. Oh okay. What numbers? Scale. So you're talking about getting stuck and all that when did you ever feel that before you had your degree as well i mean did you ever want to work somewhere else because you worked cart crew electronics and then did you work you worked wireless as well too. yeah so actually what how it worked out was i did 11 months in cart crew um i did three years in photo center but photos, oh, yeah. yeah, I was like the the head boy of Photo Center. And I taught back everyone when that, that was, was there. An actual thing. Yeah, back when like we still did art stuff, building canvases, um, taking slides and negatives, and actually you know um, converting slides into prints, doing real stuff, which was fun. I really liked the lab work. And then I worked after they got rid of that. They had Photo Center during that time, kind of work on electric electronic stuff too. Yeah. And electronics never had to do photo stuff, and they got paid more than us. So I thought that was weird. That's but that's, weird. that's a side note. But then I did about a year of Wireless Center before I finally got out of there. That's so interesting. So, okay, is your electronics? Or were you wireless? I'm trying to remember what you were. I never was officially electronics. I went cart crew, photo center, wireless. Okay, so you are technically wireless. Yes, at but the end. That's so weird because you were never... I don't remember you ever, like, being the only person up there. Oh, I, I there was plenty of times I Were was there? sitting up there playing Pocket Maurice. Okay. Oh, you're right. I remember now. <laughs> there was, yeah, there was, there was plenty of times. But whenever we worked at the same time, oh, yeah, I, I had to try to be up there. Yeah, I had someone else cover for me because yeah. it was boring as shit. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas if I, like... If you weren't there and I had to deal with, hello, then, yeah, yeah go up there, avoid. Seems like the opposite. Whenever Eric worked, instead of trying to get somebody to cover there... I just went back there and covered for him because nobody else could do it. Mm -hmm. Whereas, who covered for you whenever you didn't want to be up there? You know, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> there nobody, was... I just left. <laughs> there, there were a couple people that knew the gist of it, and I just told them, if you get anything that you can't do, just call me up there. And okay. so it wasn't really, like, important because we didn't get a lot of business up there, you know? That's true. Every once in a while, they would come up with a contract or whatever, and then that's when I got a call back. It's like, son of a bitch, okay, I yeah. will do the contract. But if it was, like, straight talk or just adding minutes, adding minutes to a, a phone, yeah. which was 90% of the job up there, then it's like they can Or helping sample. old people. Well, that was usually what old people needed help with was adding minutes to their phone. Pocket Mortys. I remember that <laughs> shit. They, they I still have it. that on my phone, but I haven't played it since yeah they patched it and like really increased uh the effects of buffs and debuffs and really kind of broke it oh. for a bit I, they fixed it afterwards but i stopped playing it by then that's a lot I, yeah, yeah i haven't played that since walmart but it's still on my phone oh. it's such a funny game that was a funny game i was a fan but anyway um, <clears throat> there was one instance specifically why i wanted to talk about and that was when i was finally leaving walmart mm-hmm we can get into the fear of getting stuck there a little bit more afterwards, but there's a specific instance that I wanted to cover. And that was, um, it was four years and ten months in, maybe like a month left until I left. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we had the... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> uh, gotta go do coke in the bathroom guy. Yeah. Um, asset Cocaine. protection man... Asset... Holy shit, I can't Asset speak. Asset protection. Asset protection. Manager. Manager. Man. Yeah. Man. Um, cocaine man. Cocaine man. Yeah, he was he was a piece of work. but So I was going around, and I had finally gotten this job with a uh, private 
private practice company for doing appointment scheduling. This is before I even got my geology job. Was this the one you did with Eric? Yeah. Okay. And so there had been a few things that had been over the line a little bit to the point where it's like, I need to leave this place specifically. And so I finally got up and was like, okay, let's go work in a new place. Got a new job. We got great hours. It was like 7 a.m. to like 3 p.m. every day. Guaranteed 40 hours full time. And really easy work. And I was telling people, you know, I put in my two weeks. And everyone's congratulating me. Except for this motherfucker. And I uh, am letting, you know, I'm letting them know. I'm like, hey, hey, uh, did you hear? Uh, I'm, 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 I got a new job. I'm going to be leaving Walmart. And he goes, looks at me dead in the eye and goes, we'll see you here in six months. What a douchebag. What a, what a prick, right? I don't get that. You're just like. Okay, you can't let someone else be happy. You got to you got to try to tear someone down when they're obviously overjoyed that they're getting out of this shithole. Everyone else is congratulating. He's just jealous. Well, yeah, that too, obviously. But everyone else is congratulating you. It's yeah. like there's a collective fight for Walmart employees to get the hell out of there. Yeah. And when someone finally does it, no matter how high up in the totem pole you are, you usually congratulate them. Oh, yeah. It's not like you got fired. It's, no, you're leaving. You it's, did it. It's like the end of your prison sentence. Yeah, exactly. Like everyone's like, oh, shit, he's free. Look at that guy. Oh, he's, he took off his jumpsuit and everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so then that asshole says that, and it really put a, a damper on my mood to the point where it's almost two years later, and I still remember you, it. You still do? Yeah. Yeah, you bring it up quite a bit. Whenever we're like in Walmart, you're like, Fuck remember that, that guy. piece of shit and what he said to me? Yeah. I need to get my business card and rub it in his face. <laughs> yeah, he works that. at a different store now. And so I've always wanted to go to that store, talk to him, and just give him my card. And just just leave. <laughs> and ask, maybe even ask him, like, how it feels to still be stuck there. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure <clears throat> if you're not, like, just a, a lower grunt in games or GameStop in Walmart it's not too it's that fucking 9%. It uh it's not too too bad maybe. But mm. even then like our manager seemed pretty depressed and maybe that's why he tore you down cuz he was also depressed that he still worked there and that's why he had to do cocaine to get over the fact that he still works there. Right. But yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, it was it was bullshit. Yeah. But yeah, that that's like that was that will probably stick in my memory for the rest of my life cuz it's just like it was a perfect example of how toxic people can be in person how negative someone can be to influence someone else's life because they are upset about something on their own end fuck that guy yeah fuck that guy dude you you got out of there you've got a great job now mm -hmm. you drill and sample minerals and stuff yeah look at rocks and lick rocks and i i lick rocks well i don't at, for my job I, I do it for fun in my own time, I like one of your hobbies. Yeah, it's, I lick rocks as a hobby. Licking rocks. Yeah, but um, yeah, so I do like environmental work and help clean up the state. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So you've you've got a cool job it's, now. It's got a purpose. Paying a hell of a lot more than Walmart. You don't have to deal with asshole people. Yeah, man. That's can't cool. complain. Yeah. But it wasn't always like that. What do you mean? Well, it wasn't always. You know, you have this idea of that you're you're somewhere where you want to be. While I was at Walmart, and we, we touched on this in the beginning, it's like, you aren't really sure if you are going to get out of that hole ever. Mm -hmm. And there was this, like, fear in the back of your head, you know, eight months later, Especially a year Walmart. later. It's like, am I going to be going anywhere? Yeah. And you, get, you see these people who have, like, five years or ten years on their name badge. That's and that's like... scarier than even just being there on your oh own. Oh, my God. Because that... you look at them and you're like, oh, my God, that could be me. Yeah. I mean, there were people that were our managers that had a, the college degree and they thought they're going to do something amazing and they were still stuck there. I don't remember his name and I, I might have told this story before, but I was on my break. I, w I went to the garden center because that's where we, we went on break because it was nobody was in there. Oh yeah, the garden center is where we eventually figured out is the best place it to be. It's the best place to take a break because you got like a gazebo. <laughs> so there's like shade from all those terrible lights that are just raping your corneas. And you're just chilling in there. And it's great. It's quiet. Usually the, the guy that's working in there is just zoning out. Yeah, because it's a slow store. Nothing happens in there. It's Ever. wonderful. 
And he, he comes in, and my 15-minute break turned into like a 30, 45-minute break because he's sitting there basically doing a Tales from Retail episode in my face. And he's just going on and on and on about his life story. And I'm like, this is really depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't oh, want to no. be you. I don't want to be you. This is awful. Please do not be me. <laughs> he's talking about like, God, just... Like, the saddest stuff and, like, how he doesn't want to be there and all this. I'm like, why? I don't even know you. Why are you talking to me? I, people just tell me things. Like, I had customers come up and just give me their life story. I have cancer. Why are you telling me? What am I going to do? I'm ringing you up. What, how am I, I going to help I work at a Walmart. You? How am I going to help your situation? <laughs> now I just feel bad. Hi, how can I help you? Cure my cancer. I can't. I can't. I can't do that. You'll be hearing from my lawyers. <laughs> But yeah, um, the the fear of getting stuck. God, you bring up the badges. I completely forgot about the damn badges. Yeah. Some people wear that proudly, and I don't understand that. Mm-hmm. Because how can you take pride in your work when you're working at Walmart? Like that's. Well, so the the thing was like, I didn't actually always hate working there. It was only yeah, in the, about the golden. Years. Yeah, it was only in like the last stretch of like maybe seven or eight months when they refused to give me full time and I was out of college, and I was out of my internship, that they really started, like, kind of homing in on me. Because mm-hmm. I think they knew... They, they know who they can pick on and who they can't. And so they, they assumed that they could pick on me. And it's like, it just kind of turns it into this awful, like, cycle of just people attacking you for no reason. Mm-hmm. And by attacking, I mean, like, just kind of looking down on you, singling you out about certain things and it's like i was always one of the best employees there so i never took it to heart but it's stuff that they do to try to wear down your willpower i don't get that is it like because i did an episode where i'm talking about how it's kind of like a cult do you think it's part of that maybe they wear people down to the point where they don't want to leave they exactly they they don't have that self-worth anymore so maybe they're gonna make themselves get stuck because they feel like they don't deserve anything better. Than yeah, it's it's like a self fulfilling prophecy. You That's make so they make you feel like shit, so you don't want to leave because you don't think you can. Wow, leave. I never thought of it that way because I never experienced any of that kind of thing because I was such I was the weirdest case of any worker there. Like I felt like I never really worked there, and people didn't even know you worked there first. <laughs> Some people didn't fucking know I worked there. It was the weird. I was like the quietest hire and the quietest leave. Like nobody really congratulated me. Like, like oh, you're leaving? Like I put in my two weeks. I told you. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, good luck. Good job. <laughs> what, what is happening? Or like, I'd get like they'd try to like get me in trouble or something. Or they like would try to scold me, but, like, they didn't really seem they, like they wanted to put in the effort to even scold me about something. They're yeah, because like, they knew you weren't staying. No, they all, like, as soon as I was hired, they knew I was going to find a new job. Yeah. They were like, whatever, you're not even worth the effort. Yeah. Like, and so... And that was the weirdest thing, because they'd, they'd come by, they'd see me on my phone at uh, the wireless, like, well, technically, you're not supposed to be, you know, messed around on your phone, but just... Keep it out of sight. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> it was the funniest thing. Yeah. Like they they just didn't care. Like whenever and then whenever they did try to do something, of course, I've talked about how I mean I wear black jeans to work because they said you could wear jeans. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you can't you can't wear black you can't wear black jeans you can't wear jeans to work. And I'm like, well, it says you can wear black jeans in the rules. And they're like, no, it doesn't. So I literally dragged them over and said, I remember that. Look at the sign. <laughs> like, oh, look at that. Amazing. Oh, wow. Or they they knew that you could wear jeans, but they're trying to make you they're feel bad. They're trying to. And then yeah. I didn't. Try to cut you down. So I, I don't think, I think they kind of left me alone after that. Yeah. They're like, well, this guy's just not and worth it. They knew in like the, maybe like the last five months or so that like, it only took about three months for me to be like, okay, I stop, I stop hating, I, I, I don't care about this place anymore. And they stopped kind of bugging me about it, but the still, the hatred and the, just like the dread of being there was still setting in pretty well. Um, Are your first three months there? No, the, like the the first three months of being out of my internship. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, like a little bit of hope here and there. And then at one point, like the, the switch flipped and it's like, I don't care, man. And they knew I didn't care, but I did my job and I helped customers. And even a year later, actually, I came in to visit because my uh, family lives somewhat close to where I used to work. And 
one of my old coworkers says, yeah, we still have people that ask for you. Wow. Yeah. Because it was really easy to figure out who I was, too, because I was the guy that wore a bow tie to work every single day. Yeah. It's like, is the guy with the bow tie still here? Like, a year later. And it's, like, insane. Our, our like, not department manager, but our a direct manager or whatever they're called. There's so many different types of managers. Zone manager? <laughs> Those didn't even exist, I don't think. Oh, they might they might have got rid of them by the time you were there. Assistant manager. CSM. I don't know. I don't know, man. She didn't even remember my name. Like I was there after a movie with Eric, and she forgot I even worked there. She's like, "You look familiar." I'm like, "I worked here for eight months for you." I'm like, <laughs> "Oh yeah." The, the short one with the curly hair. Yeah. Yeah, that's the assistant manager. And I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> like, <laughs> nobody even knows I was there. It was like the. Uh, what like the um, the usual suspects like the greatest trick the devil devil ever pulled was convincing everyone he didn't exist. I was the devil. Nobody <laughs> fucking thought I existed. It was the weirdest thing. Nobody remembers that I worked there. It was so funny. I made such a little impact. Like I did all my work. I did everything. And this, people don't remember I worked there. Uh, but that's great. I loved. I I would like to forget that I worked there. But then this series started, and I have to remember every week. Um, yeah, I, I'm, as I'm talking about these specific things, I'm remembering more things about it because it's like digging up repressed that's memories. That's what it does. That's Cause... why when I first started, I was like, I'm not going to have nearly enough content. And then it was just like, yeah. Oh, fuck. People were asking on the stream the other night um, about certain things like, you know, do you have any stories about Captain Useless or something like that? It's like, I don't remember yeah. anything about Is that place. Is it coming place. back? There's, there's little things like here and there. Like, I remember the jeans thing and who did that specifically with you. Um, I just Consuela. Yeah, Consuela. See, it's hard for me because I don't know all the names you, you know, use for the, everyone. The nicknames I just, them. I just know the motion that you do for. Yeah, that's the best. Because <laughs> it's like he's trying to grab something out of the air. I don't know what the fuck he's doing, but he did that. That's what he did. His shirt was too tight. Is that what? Don't wear a not tight shirt. But he, he has to show off off his muscles, man. Yeah, his, shir his shirts were too small. <laughs> Trying to dress nice okay. and not not doing a good job. I see the what's really funny is I see the autofocus and it's trying to focus on my cornflakes homunculus. Every breath is agony. Every breath is agony. <laughs> anyway, so anything else you want to touch on? Uh, well, I get, I do have a few cart crew stories. Some cart crew. Well, maybe we should just do a whole episode about because you. Yeah, we, we can. We can. Yeah. Years. Well, I, I did car crew for a year. Was it a year? Yeah, it was a year. I thought it was a longer, longer time. It was than eleven that. months. Wow. Really? Yep. Wow. Didn't okay. even make it a full year, thank God. Yeah, that seemed like a miserable. It was the lowest paying job and probably the hardest job. Man. And like people thought it was an easy job too, which was annoying. It I just seemed like a miserable job. Yeah, because yeah, it's easy to bring in carts, but doing it non-stop for eight hours is a lot more difficult than ringing people up or walking around electronic yeah. for eight hours it's, kind of... it's not mentally challenging but it's physically challenging <laughs> <laughs> i i realized what i said as soon as i said it <laughs> damn it i'm not gonna touch that with a ten pole. so that was the first episode with steven I'm sure you'll be in future episodes. Oh, yeah, sure. Why not? Fuck it. Um, is Steven replacing Eric? I'm sure people are asking. Yeah. I'm just going to let people ask it. I'm not going to answer it. Um, no, no, he's not. People I've asked it myself out. a few times. But actually, the the real answer is Eric's been under the table the whole time just giving me a hand, Joe. Yeah? Yep. whole time? Uh, the whole time. They can see your lap. So unless you've oh. got like a micro penis and it's like underneath your chair. Just edit out my lap. <laughs> <laughs> they They don't know. But yeah, it was it was a good episode talking about getting stuck. Definitely. Would you? Okay, one question real quick. Um, first of all, why didn't you try to work anywhere else during this time? Because you worked there a long time. Well, like I said, I didn't hate working there until That's after true. I got on my internship. There was was that really was that the only time? Because I know the golden years ended pretty much a little bit before I joined. And then you joined, and it was fun again. I joined. It was it was somewhat fun when we worked together, but we rarely worked together. That's true. And when we did, they gave us so much fucking shit. But didn't we? Weren't we both out of college by then? Um. Cause that's. 
exactly the time frame I'm talking about. I'm trying to remember if I was out of college when I first started working there. I don't think... I think I was still finishing up, maybe. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I was finishing up. I don't remember, actually. I don't remember if I was still in college. I don't think I was out of college for eight months. So the, the thing before is... Before I got another job. Regardless of that, the thing is, like, when you're working at Walmart, they're, and you have managers that are nice... And you're doing other things that are important, like college. Yeah. For the most part, they work really well with you with your hours. They they work with, like, finals dates. Um, and the pay wasn't bad, honestly. The pay wasn't bad. And th- they will accept your school schedule as it is. The people, like, and in small doses, like, you know, like some eight-hour shifts, like, a couple times a week. Or, like, three or four or four-hour shifts throughout the week. Really not that bad. Hmm. Like, I never had a problem with it until it was my only source of income. Well, I mean, it was always my only source of income, but, like, until it was what I had to depend on, there was no light at the end of the tunnel saying, college is almost over. Like, as soon as it was, I wanted to get full-time, that's when it started getting bad. Because they didn't give you a full-time. Well, not just that, but it's because I knew I had to have it. Yeah. Like, when I'm working 24 hours there a week... And it's kind of working around my school schedule. I can do homework in the in, in my breaks or whatever. That's great. Yeah. And there's there's some nice people I can talk to if they're working with me. The golden age, of course, with just some fantastic people. We'll have to do an episode just on the golden age. Yeah, um, Eric will have to be here for that. I Eric think. needs to be. We might do a, a three person episode for that, just because you guys have a lot of experience with the golden age. I was not there for it. I've been told about it. It was, it was amazing. But I would love to discuss that with you guys. I don't know how we're going to fit three people in camera. I guess we'll just push it back. Maybe we'll do it we'll in his house. Well, have sit on my lap. <laughs> <laughs> You're just making the gay rumors worse. It's fine. <laughs> Whatever. Um, and then, yeah, we'll probably just do it in the, the, the futon, and maybe we'll do a, a Back to the Futon podcast the same day. I've never know. been to his house before, so that'd be kind of neat. Yeah, that'd be cool. Maybe we'll do that in the future. We'll have a, a three-person Tales from Retail on a three-person Back to the Futon podcast. Another couple That's one of, of my favorite things channel. on YouTube to watch. What? You even watch <laughs> shit from this channel. Don't even. Motherfucker, I didn't even know what the intro was like. I had to play him an intro for this series. That's fine. <laughs> God, just thinking about that was hilarious. Anyway. So how does it normally work, Fanta? Yeah, that was fucking... Oh, you just do what we do on the other... Oh, right. No, right. You don't watch any of this. <laughs> you prick. That's fine. He doesn't even have time to watch good channels. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Of course, leave a like down below if you guys, you know, liked the video. Subscribe for more content. And as always, have a fantastic day. Watch him on Twitch. Watch on Twitch. It's fun. Today, uh, tonight rather, is going to be Mario Kart or Super Smash Bros. So... Why not? We play with the viewers. Come yeah. join us. Yeah, don't even just watch them. Play with them. Right? Most people beat us. So <laughs> you come can feel better about shit. yourself. Exactly. Yeah. I know I do. This shit's good, by the way. It's Imperial IPA. Proud of you. Still enjoying that? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's got that, like, sour, not sour, but, like, what do what beets taste like? It's got that... It's not sweet. It's not sour, really. It's kind of like bitter. That's the word. Yeah. It's got that little bit of bitter it's to it. It's a weird... But it's a different bitter than normal for stouts. It's and a I kind of dig that. taste.